Hey guys, Nick Espinoza, your chief security fanatic here. And today I've actually got a very special guest with me. His name is Mark Sargent. And I'm going to let him explain what he's all about. But I think this is going to be a very fascinating conversation. And it may not be something that you, uh, you necessarily expect. And if you have uh, any idea of what he does, you can look at his background uh, from behind him right here. But I just saw him on a documentary called Behind the Curve, and I had to reach out because I wanted to talk about the, inter uh, the internet and proliferation of, of groups like what Mark is leading. And so with that, Mark, thank you for joining me. And can you tell the audience just a little bit about what you're about and what's going on? Uh, yeah, thank you for having me, first of all. It, My uh, pleasure. For, for reaching out. And uh, before we even get into it, yeah, your listeners, viewers, slash readers are going to come back at you for this. <laughs> because <laughs> you're, you're obviously giving a crazy person a, flat, um, uh, a platform. Ooh, I should say platform. There you go. Because uh, I just thought of that. Uh, because yes, I am a flat earth advocate. One of the people, if flat earth was software, we are now flat earth 2.0. Flat earth okay. has been around for a really, really long time, but only in the last five years ago or the last five years or so have we turned it into something really, really big on the internet. And we'll, we'll get into the why here in a second, but the, the short version of what I believe is that we're not living on a silly little rock that's flying through space in multiple directions in an impossible universe. We are in a building with walls and a floor and a ceiling and you know, like a snow globe, a planetarium, a terrarium, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. And that it was built for a reason and that you're not an accident and you're part of something much more intimate and much cooler and for whatever reason it's been gaining a, an amazing amount of traction and so yeah hmm. that's yeah. what i believe in oh and, and 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 thank you for that i mean obviously i think most of the world is contrarian to your beliefs in that sense yeah. um you know and uh but i find this interesting and the focus of my conversation as I was you know, talking to you before we started recording here um, mm -hmm. is not actually on like the flat earth belief system you know, itself. And obviously I will, as I mentioned, give you a chance to plug oh, in sure. if people want to learn more about you. But what, because my show is basically on technology, cybersecurity and all of that, one of the things that, that I find absolutely interesting, and I did a little bit of homework on Flat Earth, is, is basically how you recruit and how you grow your numbers, because what is unprecedented in humanity for basically the history of it is this massive communication platform that is the internet. And so when I was looking this up, about 19, from about 1970 or so to 1990, which was kind of what I understand, and please correct me if I'm wrong, was a revival of the Flat Earth movement, they grew to about 3,500 or so, and then in the late 90s started declining until right. it was rebooted in 2004 when it turned into a discussion forum online and yeah. then started attracting members. And yeah. I'm very curious to understand because we've got a, like a lot of different groups out there, um, you know, that that most most of the time their people their members wouldn't be able to find each other if it wasn't for the internet. Right. And so I'm curious to know how the Flat Earth has grown since 2004 it was a discussion forum, you know, what your marketing strategy looks like, um, you know, in terms of that, because obviously you're trying to attract new members to your, to your movement, to your cause, to your belief, whatever you want to call it. Right. And I think it's just, it's absolutely fascinating to me and, you know, and just not just Flat Earth, but other groups that basically find themselves. So can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not much. As a matter of fact, you know, Congress got involved uh, last year, beginning of last year, where, I mean, I was stunned. I was watching on television where they had the head of Google and, and the head of YouTube up there. Uh, and they were asking them, you know, it was the big fake news discussion, which okay. was, you know, uh, and, and I understood why. So uh, real quick, between 2004 and 2014 or so, not really much happened. I mean, Flat Earth was out there, of course, but it was really ethereal in nature. And I'm going to take you know, as much credit as I can, which was I looked at it in the summer of 2014, and there really wasn't that much out there, and I hated it like everybody else. I, I thought it was terrible. It's like, oh, this thing. And I was a conspiracy guy. And so you, you didn't, so you didn't believe flat Earth until about 2014. I just want to make sure I understand. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't even, okay. didn't even, didn't give give it the time of day. And I was a conspiracy guy. I, I have an opinion on just about every conspiracy you could think of. Like, like, like what? Just out, out of curiosity. Oh, I, well, I mean, you, I, take your take your pick. I mean, I don't want to get. I, no, I don't want to turn this into a conspiracy it's, show. Uh, but if you no, can, no, 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 prof. <laughs> yeah, if you can think of it, 
I've, I've looked at it. So everything from, you know, do, do I think that 9-11 was an inside job? I've got some, gotcha, yeah, gotcha, I do. Gotcha. But do I think that um, Bigfoot had Elvis's baby? Probably not. Gotcha. So, you know, there's this huge spectrum. And, and again, I had my opinion. Everybody knows about Flat Earth. Everybody's heard it. I have yet to run into a single person. It's like Flat Earth, <laughs> never, you know, no idea what you're talking about. Everybody knows about it and everybody hated it. And it was really just on my bucket list. It was like, all right, fine. You know, I, I saw a couple of videos on YouTube and it's like, okay, I'll look at it. I'll crush this thing. Everybody hates it. And everyone does the same thing. They try to destroy it. And in fact, it's one of my, my t-shirts, which is, you know, I, I, Every day I wake up and I try to destroy flat earth and every day I fail. And it's so frustrating. You, meaning you try to disprove the theory? Oh yeah. Yeah. Everybody wants to, everyone wants to go back to their normal life because once you go down this rabbit hole, you're stuck. That's it. I mean, we have a 99% retention rate and it's ridiculous. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be that way, but let's get back to the technology side of it. So I went out and, and I basically, I worked for about nine months on this thing off and on trying to disprove flat earth. And then I said, you know what? I'm going to go the other way. I, I can't prove the globe in a court of law anymore. And that's really the, the big premise here is like, can I prove flat earth to you right now? No, I can't. Okay. Can I create so much reasonable doubt in the globe that the only thing you have to go to is some sort of flat earth model? Yeah, I probably can. And you say, well, reasonable doubt isn't enough. And it's like, well, it is in court all day long. I mean, reasonable doubt is, is one of those things. So I made a series of videos, real short. Uh, you know, when you start out on YouTube, uh, you don't even get to make long videos. You have to make short videos, like less than 15 minutes. And I called them the Flat Earth Clues. And I said, okay, here's why I can't prove the globe anymore. Threw them out on YouTube and said, you know, let, let, them, let them come at me. And I really thought some academic, somebody with a PhD was going to come call me. And I put my phone number out there, my real address, my real name. I said, mm -hmm. shoot me down, please. Okay. And they didn't. So it just started getting, and what I had done was I in, inadvertently created the dummies guide for flat earth. And I know that sounds kind of redundant, but that's really what I had done. And people just started getting a hold of me. I, you know, it's like a, the, the masses, you know, started, it's like, oh, this is really, really interesting. And then the media, it's like, oh, tell me more about it. And then subject matter experts, you know, people I would have never thought of, uh, you know, pilots and, and all branches of the armed forces and engineers and air traffic controllers and all these guys saying, you know what, it's not that nuts. Here's why. And through YouTube, I mean, that's what we're really talking about here. Without YouTube, we, we wouldn't even be talking. It just okay. started getting okay. bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, and there was this weird combination of organic growth because people thought, again, it's, it's an interesting topic. Whether you love it or hate it, it's really, really interesting. Mm -hmm. And then we had these media spikes every once in a while or some high profile person would make some statement about it. And then it would get this big boost and, and it would just start ratcheting up. So in 2016, um, we had uh, rapper B.O.B. go against uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Brilliant. <laughs> the guy, you know, mm -hmm. B.O.B. nominated for a Grammy, Neil Tyson, the most popular scientist in the world. You know, th that, that took us through 2016. And then 2017, we had um, athletes like Kyrie Irving and other basketball players get into it. Mm -hmm. um, 2018, we had the documentary. We, you know, we shot in 2017, but it really wasn't. The, really the, behind, the behind the curve, the one I yeah. saw on Netflix. Yeah, oh. that. Okay. That really set things off. And I had nothing to do with the production of it. That was just a, 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 like anything. Some film group out of Los Angeles followed us around for nine months in 2017. And they, um, honestly, they had no confidence in it whatsoever. In fact, I didn't either. It's like, you know, producers come, producers go, and you see projects you know, fizzle out. And, and this mm -hmm. thing was really interesting. They, they said, okay, we'll, um, we'll, we'll, we'll send it to some film festivals right and it's like well it probably won't get accepted and it did every time and it's like well okay it's in some film festival it's not gonna get bought <laughs> and it did and mm -hmm. so that's kind of where between that and the the you know all the other little things in social media that were connected to it it just kept growing and growing to where and and to your comment in the beginning you know we're not actively recruiting members we, there's no, there's no council. There's no, you know, we don't, we don't have any form there, you know, no address for the flat earth society. And we're not tied to the flat earth society in any way. We're right. just the social media version of flat earth. Well, then I, then I think that that actually strikes at, at what I want, really want to talk about in this conversation. Cause 
you know, I wrote an article for uh, Michael Smirkanish of CNN called Crowdsourcing Our Outrage. And it, yep. wasn't on, it wasn't on Flat Earth, but I actually mentioned Flat Earth in it where you've got a lot of people that, that normally wouldn't find each other. So uh, I would have to imagine that most, for example, Flat Earth members, when they are, let's say, offline out of the internet, they're surrounded by their family members and their family members are like, are you high? You know, like, like oh, yeah. why, why do you believe this? And so they find camaraderie, they find a, a common ground with other Flat Earth members that they wouldn't normally find if it wasn't for the internet. Like yes. I have to imagine to grow 3,500 users, you know, uh, th users, excuse me, 3,500 members of Flat Earth between 1970 and roughly 1990, that would have to take a lot of, you know, you'd have to have a newsletter, you'd have to have some kind of platform, um, you know, prior to the internet. And I have to imagine that that even if you're not actively recruiting, you're putting out this information and then the media picks up some of it. You know, like I'm surprised to hear Neil deGrasse Tyson even debate this issue. I would imagine that that's not something that he would want to do, um, right. you know, unless he's really just thinking, OK, this this is growing to a point where where I think I need to, as a, as a noted scientist, address this. And right. so in that sense, you know, you, you're using YouTube as a platform, you know, for de facto recruitment. And so I'm, I'm curious yeah. to know then, you know, here in the beginning of uh, 2020, what are the numbers right now? Do you have an estimate? I, and, and in the video, excuse me, in right. the documentary, um, I saw that you guys had a, like your first annual convention, I believe it was in right. North Carolina. Um, right. You know, so you obviously have enough momentum uh, and you are, you are collecting, let's say, enough money from people that are signing up to this to be able to put on a conference. Oh, and, yeah. and so by virtue of that, if, if I'm looking at the, the internet as a whole, as a platform for people to find each other, you know, I have to imagine from YouTube, you've sprung up a lot of a lot of things like uh, message forums or however that works for you guys that that is allowing you to perpetuate and kind of recruit, even if you're not, you know, sending somebody a, a mailer or whatever right. that is, you know. Yeah, you're 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 absolutely right. And we're you're Neil Tyson was kind of ahead of the head of the game in that he was worried and there were other groups that were worried. National Geographic uh, got a hold of us and they, they ran a story and, and took me down to Los Angeles. And, and we, the, the reason why they were concerned was there was a survey, and I don't know if you know any of the big survey groups, one out of London called U.gov. Uh, and not off the top of my head. That's right. Well, U.gov, um, uh, European group, they, uh, they said, oh, we're going to pull 10,000 Americans, just random Americans, and see what they think about Flat Earth. And the, the general numbers were skewing three to 5% until they got to, you know, overall, but the number that really spooked people was the 18 to 24 year olds, the 18 to 24 year olds. It was over a third, like 34% were doubtful of the globe. And they thought it was an anomaly. In fact, other scientific groups were going after you.gov. So, well, you're obviously doing the survey wrong. It's like, what are you talking about? This is what we do. <laughs> it's like, we're not, we're not screwed mm -hmm. up. And we were finding that more and more and more to where in fact, Legally, you're not even supposed to talk to anybody under the age of 18, you know, because of child laws. Right. right but I can tell right. you after the documentary, one of the big reasons why the, the documentary skewed the way it was, the director hated Flat Earth by the time it was done. Oh, my God. The, the big reason was, though, at the end, if you remember the documentary uh, where that 12 year old kid walked up to the microphone and was asking me questions at the conference, mm -hmm. that really freaked out some people because they're like, wait a minute. What, what's happening you know, if the kids you know because as you know the kids are more pliable and so under 18 we're going we're over 50 percent right now and right, so it's, are you saying 50 percent of your membership is under 18 years of age no 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 not at all i'm just okay. saying that if you're under 18 you are not only do you know about it you're way more accepting of it but like a lot of things you know the again which is why i use the the truman show reference you know we mm -hmm. We believe the world that is presented to us and children are, or people under a certain age, basically the, the short version is as you get younger in the demographics, you skew more, you know, more credibility is given to social media. And you, you know, mm -hmm. that's probably one of your follow-up questions, which is I've run into younger people that basically if you have, which is just mind boggling to me, if you have millions of followers, doesn't matter if you purchase them or not, or if they're absolutely real. If you have millions of followers listed in any form of social media, you are instantly credible. Mm -hmm. Absolutely instantly credible. I mean, to the, to the point where you're as credible as CNN or Fox or mm -hmm. ABC or NBC. 
Right. And but, so, because but, it's all coming through the same device. Yeah. But, but I, but I think that that is actually part of, part of a, a, a follow-up question, if you will, in the sense yeah. that one of the things that, that I write about and I talk about is misinformation and disinformation campaigns. You know, right. like let's say a foreign government, for example, could go ahead and run a disinformation campaign in let's say an election or, or something else to sway the electorate. We have seen and studies have borne out that a lot of social media platforms uh, or people rather that use like, let's say the Facebooks of the world tend to get the information from, from their friends posting on this. And right. it's not necessarily that their friends are journalists or vetting this information. They read the headline, they find it interesting, they put it out there. And now suddenly we've got people, you know, that are believing things that they shouldn't necessarily believe in that sense. And, and, I, and, and you know, because it's not been vetted in all of that. You know, I, I think there would be an argument, let's say for flat earth, or, you know, you can take another, another topic that, that I think has really sprung up and, and found a lot of camaraderie online, like the anti-vaccination movement and, you sure. know, some other stuff. Um, and, and, and so in that sense, you know, how, how do you, how do you present yourself as not fake news when 99.999% of us right now on the planet, myself included, I mean, I'm the first to admit, I don't believe what you believe, right. you know? And, and so I'm curious, I'm curious to know like how you guys say, well, this isn't fake news. You know, we, one of the things, don't, well, and, and hang on one second, because okay. one of the things I saw in behind the curve was um, that, you know, your people tried to make some attempts, you know, with the laser and the light trying to, you know, prove that the earth is flat as opposed to curved. And, sure you know, those experiments failed or they were not, they were not being executed properly or in some way, shape or form. The right. result, the result did not definitively prove flat earth. Sure. And so I'm curious to know how you take that information and say, well, you know, we're going to still perpetuate this or, or we're going to try again, or, or we're going to spread this out to the world. And we've got a lot of young people that are seeing this and saying, yeah, well, now I question this when, as far as I know, and from what I understand, the Neil deGrasse Tysons of the world that, that have a lot of training in physics and, and everything else can basically right. say, here's the equation that disproves this. Do you get what got I'm it, saying? Got it, got it. And I'm not okay. trying to insult your beliefs here. No, I no, just, no, no. I genuinely no, want not... to understand philosophically, you know, how, how you guys are, are taking that in the world of fake news, in the world of fake information, in the world of perpetuation unchecked through social media, where a lot of information gets out there that is just demonstrably false. Got it. Got it. Got it. Um, well, yeah, there's a couple of questions. Well, I'll, I'll see if I can answer them in the order you, you laid it out. The, the first thing is we don't have to emphasize us versus any other media because we don't have to, we don't ever have to come out and say we're real and other people aren't, or we don't have to differentiate between our beliefs and other, other beliefs we may not agree with. Mostly because the, the viewer, you know, the people that have these, the, 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 thing, the thing has changed is this. And that is, if you're getting all your media through one device, you know, if, if kids aren't watching television, the, the, the biggest screen I saw anybody over the vacation, you know, I, I watched a bunch of kids, was on their laptop. And that was generally because they were doing other things. Most of the time, though, they were on this. If you're right. getting youtube videos and social media videos and other information through this in the same breath as you know the news news channels cnn and nbc and abc what's the difference meaning it, you're you're getting bombarded with images and honestly the the major networks and there's only what five of them get lost in the shuffle now when it comes to us <sighs> How shall I put this? I'm going to try to put this as gently as I can because I don't want to sound scary when, when I'm doing this. As long as you don't swear because it's No, 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 no. I, I, I never. <laughs> Other I never than that, you're good. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, never, I never swear. But yeah, what I, yeah. the, the short version is because why does this keep gaining traction? Why do we keep just getting bigger and bigger and weirder? And I mean, we were just on the cover of um, uh, Popular Science and the cover of Newsweek. And, well, uh, it's, just, it's not so much in increasing so much as it is how you're differentiating yourself because what you believe, you don't believe to be fake news. No, what, what no, I think, not, not right, at all. No, of, of course, of course. Yeah, but yeah. what I think a lot of the world looks at that and they're like, oh, fake news. Do, do you get what uh, I'm but, saying? Yeah, and, and they should. They absolutely should. They should go at it skeptically. In fact, if you, would, you, know, if you were to come out and say, oh, yeah, this is, you know, I'm buying it, I think there was something wrong with you. It's, in fact, I said it in my last book. I said, look, if you buy into this in the first 20 minutes, there's something wrong. Because everybody's knee-jerk response takes a minimum, like two weeks. I mean, I saw, yeah, I saw a woman 
flip in about an hour. But I think she was super, super open-minded. Women generally are. But the, the short version is this. We've created a way of explaining the world, which is far easier than the heliocentric model, the solar system model. The solar system model, so if I was holding, I don't have my props in front of me, but if I have a globe in one hand and a snow globe in the other, right? Okay. The globe, and they look roughly the same size. However, the globe cannot exist on its own. The globe needs a massive solar system around it, you know, with the sun and other planets. It needs a galaxy around that and a universe around that. And it needs what geometry and trigonometry and calculus and quantum mechanics and all that. Snow globe needs nothing. Snow globe barely needs algebra. To, to survive. I mean, and it doesn't need anything else outside it. And people are the, not, not to quote the art of war too much, but uh, the, the, the old saying, which I love, which is people are like water. They always find that take the path of least resistance. This, I, I'm trying not to say that people are lazy, but if the snow globe model is easy to ex, easier to explain than the globe model, that's what they're going for. And you say, well, it's, it's, but, but just because it's easy doesn't mean it's right. I'm going, no, it doesn't, but it means they're going to follow that path because it's, it's easier to do. And you know, how many, you know, I don't know if you were in math club or chess club or, or all the other clubs in, in, mm -hmm. in high school, but those clubs, as you know, are very, very small because the, the, the science nerds and the geeks, and I was one of those nerds, mm -hmm. is it's a very small group. The masses mm -hmm. are very basic and which is what, you know, we could, you can't get the, the term more easier than, or I'm sorry, more easier, good English. Uh, the term flat earth. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's two syllables and people, everybody's heard of it. And so, but everyone has, you again, has that knee jerk response. They go, mm -hmm. oh, it's terrible, awful. And then they look into it and they go, well, they'll do the same thing I do, which is why literally the first chapter of my book is called Look Away. I, I literally dissuade people from going to it. I say, don't look, and I'm not trying to do the reverse psychology thing, which is, you know, don't think about elephants. I'm not trying to do that, but I'm, I'm trying to say, don't look at it uh, because it's a rabbit hole. And once you go down it, you're, you're not coming back. It is the, the greatest red pill, blue pill. One more thing. Yeah. To your, and, I, and I know you're probably going to go over in time, but it's just the way it's probably going to be, which is when, when it came to the documentary, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, fine. Jaron screwed up his experiment, right? And Bob, you know, but you got to remember, but there's a lot of power of editing here. Jaron didn't screw up ex his experiment. The director left a lot of stuff out, but he wasn't going to clarify. In fact, Jaron was just livid after the movie was over because he's like, well, he, goes, he goes, what happened? He goes, <laughs> he goes, why didn't they show blah, 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 blah. And, and it's like, well, because the director made a stand and because he, the, the director and the producers all agreed. It's like this thing shouldn't be pushed out to kids. And one more, one more thing, because I, I remember what you said. It's like, well, because Neil deGrasse Tyson has the equation to disprove, disprove the flat earth, does he? What's that equation? I've never heard of it. And we put it, in fact, we've been using science. I've memorized so many different little scientific fact to it. And in learning the formula, that's one of our big things. It's like the curvature of the earth is eight inches per mile squared, supposedly. Why can't we ever see it? And HD technology, and to your, to your point, technology has changed it we wouldn't have had nearly attraction uh, 15 years ago. But HD technology has changed that to where now with HD cameras, you can look way, way farther than you should be able to with the curvature of the earth. But nobody even thought about it because how 99 out of 100 people on the street, well, maybe one in a thousand people on the street even know what the curvature formula is. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I ramble. Right. Well, no, and, and you know, I, I, I appreciate that. I just, uh, you know, I, I'm... I am curious because like you, you mentioned one thing and we are a little over on time, but so I want to follow up with, with one or two yeah. more things, but uh, you know, you mentioned that, yeah, the vast majority of us are actually getting our um, we're getting our media content from our mobile phone. But what I'm talking right. about more is I can use my mobile phone to go to the Washington post or the New York times or scientific journals, or I can go to Facebook you know, and just see what my friends are posting, whatever hyperbolic, you know, article, and maybe it's a well-reasoned thought out article, or maybe it's, it's something different. And one of the things that I'm, I'm curious to know, just because I think the most of the planet would label you fake news, even though you believe this and you, you don't believe that it is fake, um, you know, and sure. so, and so I'm curious in that sense, and I think this will be my last question is, you met, you stated nearly at the beginning of this, this um, interview that, uh, you basically wouldn't be here if it wasn't for YouTube. 
YouTube That's is absolutely free, right. YouTube is a free platform that gives you the ability to post whatever content you want, short of violating their terms of services. Um, and and by virtue of that, anybody can put out anything. And yeah. so and so in that sense, if you are sitting there, let's say pushing out things about flat earth clues or hey, why don't you think about it in this way? Mm -hmm. um, you know, that doesn't necessarily, and, and please forgive me here because I'm, I'm, that doesn't necessarily make you an authority in, in science or in flat earth or whatever. And right. so by virtue of that, the audience has to take you at your word or you have to show credibility in some way, shape or form. I have a degree from this. I've studied this, or, you know, whatever that is. And again, I'm not right. sitting here trying to knock you or, or, or oh, no, it's fine. down. It's I, fine. I, I just, I, I'm trying to, to get to that, to that, to that core of it where I think, you guys have built a community and just out of curiosity, how many people are, do you estimate are in flat earth right now or actively involved? You might not have like membership cards, but, but oh, how many people did you get at your conference out of curiosity? Which one? Okay. <laughs> the, well, I mean, so the one the, I know the of one is in Raleigh. Uh, the one I know of is the one from behind the curve. I'm assuming you do it annually. And so I'd be curious to know what those numbers are. Oh yeah. Yeah. That curiosity. was, I remember that was, Oh yeah. That was, that was two years ago. And I think we had five six hundred at that one and okay. then uh after that last year we had denver and edmonton canada and london and then this year we had i mean it's just that the growth has been amazing i did conferences in calgary stockholm london los angeles south carolina dallas and auckland and it just it just went through the freaking okay. roof. But so I mean, how many people? Millions, millions of people. I now exact numbers don't know because ninety percent of our members are in the closet. You know, every 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 other email I get is from somebody who says, "Oh yeah, I'm totally with you," but there's no way I'm going to come out to my friends and family and coworkers. I can't because they're you know they're worried, they're scared. Why wouldn't they be? The okay. biggest one is coworkers because you can you can deal with your friends and family, but your coworkers so you can't, you you can't really. Worried. You can't really quantify a number then? It's 5,000 members, 2,000 members? Of millions. You're, you're, you're saying that millions of people around the globe, of the 7 billion of us, you have millions that are subscribing oh, yeah. to Flat Earth. Absolutely. Absolutely you, millions. No question. Have, no, okay. But, well, I question though. Well, no, no. <laughs> I'd like to understand how you- I'll, were, go, I'll just go off the UDOT you know? Gov survey. Look at it yourself. If they say that 3 to 5% of Americans just up, off, the, off the bat- and every percentage point is 3.3 million. And if a third of the, of the kids 18 to 24, do that demographic yourself. Millions mm -hmm. of people. I'm not kidding you. There's a reason why we're making the covers of the thing. So a, hell, I did a commercial in Melbourne last year. How does that happen? It wasn't because we only had a few thousand members. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you there are millions of people. Okay. Well, Mark, I, I want to thank you for your time and I've got to wrap it up or else I'm going to run over, oh, no, that's uh, you fine. know, for, for my segment here. Um, sure. yeah, I honestly could talk to you for the next couple of hours. I, I have just so many questions on, on how this proliferates on the internet, just for sure. my own research on, on internet communication. But if people want to find you, I, I, like I said, I'm more than happy to give you a plug for, for whatever you want to plug. So Oh yeah, you find um, you or follow you or contact you. What's the best way? The, the easiest way is just uh, to Google flat earth clues. It's, uh, it's a video series on YouTube. It's a couple books now. Uh, the, the documentary is called Behind the Curve. It's on Netflix and Amazon and every other place you could want. And uh, if you want to just email me directly, my email address is msergeant23 at comcast.net. All right. Well, Mark, again, thank you very much for your time. And uh, yeah. it's greatly appreciated. And so this is Nick Espinoza signing off.